In a couple minutes, someone is gonna walk through that door with a pair of sneakers that I've always considered the grail of grails. A pair of shoes that I've literally always wanted and I've never been able to get. And I'm finally pulling the trigger. But before we get to that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. I love my job. I love YouTube. I love socks. I love everything about it. But I found that with work and with life and with everything going on, I get really, really stressed out. Even to the point where I get migraines. And I didn't even realize that my migraines were stress related until a couple years ago, but it all makes sense. And that's why I started using the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. Regardless of if you have a clinical mental health issue like anxiety or depression, or you're just a human going through a hard time, therapy can give you the tools to approach life in a different way. And I've gotta say that even though I just started using BetterHelp recently, it's already had a pretty profound impact in the way that I handle stressful situations and just my life in general. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable affordable and more accessible. Finding the right therapist for you can be really hard, especially when you're just limited to options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online and remote, and by just filling out a couple questions online, it can help you find the right therapist for you in just as little as a few days. Check out BetterHelp by visiting betterhelp.com slash Seth Fowler. Clicking that link not only supports my channel, but it also gives you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, so you can connect with a therapist and see if therapy helps you. And because finding a therapist is like dating, if you don't fit with that therapist, which is a common thing in therapy, you can easily switch to a different therapist at no additional cost without worrying about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. BetterHelp can help you with whatever you're going through, whether it's stress from everyday life or really anything else. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp by clicking the link in the top of the description below or by visiting betterhelp.com slash Seth Fowler. And once again, huge thank you to BetterHelp for supporting the channel. Yeah. Sweet. Thought it only made sense to put it in the vintage bulls bag, sick, you know? I'm assuming this is a replacement box. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, I just wanted to be in something, you know. I'm so stoked. Woo! Look at this. Oh, no. These are crazy. So after years of wanting this pair of shoes and never thinking I'd ever be able to have it because the price was just so insane, I have them in my favorite colorway. I can't believe it. This is literally the grail of grails. So first off, huge thank you to Bailey for making this video possible and selling me this pair of shoes. And not only selling me this pair of shoes, but also driving all the way out from Tennessee to Philadelphia, which is like a 10 hour drive to make it happen. So honestly, I really appreciate it. And thank you, Bailey, for that. If you guys haven't checked out Bailey's channel, make sure to click the link in the description below. You can also find out more about how he found this pair of shoes and uh, see his side of things when he came up to Philadelphia because we did a little vlog series together. So if you guys want to check that out, subscribe to him if you could. He makes awesome some content and seriously if it wasn't for Bailey I would not have this grail and this is one of those pairs of shoes that like I said has always been a grail of mine but I never ever ever thought I was gonna have it so the fact that I have it here and the fact that it's gonna sit on that shelf behind me for like every sneaker video moving forward is pretty amazing did he give you like a backstory in these at all like no really no it was too it was just some man selling them on Facebook marketplace <laughs> and he just put Nike Air Jordans right is what he put in the description put a hundred dollars and I saw this that, in the yep. picture, and I'm like, nobody has messaged him about these yet. So I immediately was like, hey, I'll buy these off you today. And then oh he met me. Oh my gosh. But he was, a, he was an older man. Mm -hmm. He had like a handicap tag. Gotcha. He gotcha. had a little trouble speaking. Gotcha. So that's why, like, with what you paid me for them, I'm just going to give them back to give it back Dude, to Dude, that's him. amazing, man. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I had an idea of what they were going to look like in my head, like, condition-wise, but these are, like, way better than I expected, awesome. to be honest with you. And I love, like, the patina. It looks just like your Lost and Found. I know. I mean, this is, like, the, the actual Lost and Found. I know, yeah, it literally is. in a basement forever. So Bailey reached out to me through Chase After the Right Price, who you guys might have seen me do some videos with a couple weeks ago. We did some research together to try and figure out how much a fair price for these guys would be, and we landed on $1,100. So that allows Bailey to bring back $1,000 dollars to the guy he bought them from and I got them for maybe like a hundred or two hundred dollars cheaper than what I probably would have had to pay if I bought them online because I would have had to pay shipping and fees and things like that so I think at the end of the day everyone's happy it's a pretty incredible shoe obviously it doesn't come with the box or any of the extra accessories because this pair is 38 years old and the fact that it's even in this kind of condition is pretty amazing and actually what's even crazier if you watch the video where Bailey finds his pair of shoes you see the condition that they were in when he bought them from the guy and uh, they look like this. Obviously right now they look 10 times better because Bailey took the time and actually cleaned them up with Rejuvenator and made sure that they were as clean as they possibly could be without ruining the shoes or damaging them in any way. So really appreciate Bailey for doing that. You did such a good job cleaning them up to you, man. Dude, I appreciate it. The fact that you stuffed them is amazing. Yeah. So keep them in the right shape. Yeah, whenever like I got them, you could tell someone had just thrown boxes on them. They've yep. been sitting in a garage like forever, you know? Yep. Oh my goodness. I know, dude. It's like the Air Jordan. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? 
That's oh what started it off. Oh my gosh. And dude, the condition is like really, really good. I'm I thought really so too. Yeah. 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 That's nuts. And personally, I love the fact that these shoes look like they've been worn. I mean, they have been worn, but they definitely look like it. And for a shoe that's 38 years old and the first Air Jordan 1 ever, it feels like these shoes had a life before I actually got them. And what's crazy is that I actually compared these to the Lost and Found 1s, and a lot of the things that were happening to the Lost and Found 1s, like the, uh, the cracking leather around the top of the ankle collar area, and also the yellowing midsole, that's all happening on this shoe. So they definitely based this shoe off a pair of Air Jordan 1s that had sat for 38 years. Now, in addition to these scuffs that you can see on the upper and some of the stitching getting ripped out, and of course, the worn outsole and some of the cracking around the ankle area, the foam on the ankle area is also very, very stiff. And that's because over time, it just stiffens and hardens up. The moisture or whatever it is that was in there is no longer there and it's become very brittle. So the only part of the shoe that is brittle, other than probably, I guess, some of the leather panels, is this foam area. So I'm not gonna wear these, obviously. Um, not that I would have anyway. But that's another common thing that happens to sneakers that are 38 years old. But seriously, these are 38 years old. These are almost 40 years old. I'm 31. These are seven years older than me. And they still look pretty, in fact, they look better than I look. <laughs> they just look really good for what they are. So I'm really excited about having these. Oh, and also, these are the original laces that came with the shoes. Did you replace the laces or are these laces that came no, out? No, those are OG. Seriously? So, um, I took them out and put them in the washing machine. I was going to say, they looked really fresh. Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So as you can probably tell, this is a pretty large pair. This is a size 13. Here's it up against my size 9 bread ones from 2016. When it comes to shoes this old, beggars can't be choosers. So uh, I couldn't grab a size 9 in this shoe. And again, even if I did grab a size 9, I wouldn't wear it because you shouldn't be wearing shoes that are 38 years old, at least if you're trying to collect them and keep them looking as good as they did when you bought them. But I'm actually really happy that I grabbed such a large size because when I put it in the background of the studio, it really pops. Like it looks amazing back there and you can really see what it is. So I mean, it really is all around just the perfect shoe. I'm so excited about this and I'm blessed to have it. Like I really am like this. This is pretty incredible. That's crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. This is like the craziest thing. It's literally my favorite colorway. Dude, honestly, like if you had come to me with any of the 85s, I would have been interested. But like the fact that it's my favorite colorway of all yeah, time, yeah. just it's like, it's 10 times crazier. And the condition is just ridiculously good. Like, oh, dude, I think so too. <laughs> I think so too. I'll make sure to overlay some videos of Bailey cleaning these guys up. Because when he first got them, they did not look this good. And he did a really good job. You like clean them well and in a way that's not going to destroy them, which I really like was sick. Yeah. That was awesome. Thank you. Like you really took your time with it, which is dope. Like you would never want to wear these, I'm assuming, because they just crack and crumble. Yeah. Like the top of it. The bottom would probably be fine, but yeah. that's so crazy, man. Before I stuffed them and cleaned them, right. like you could knock really? on the toes. Yeah. That's nuts. Like it was that hard. And then this is still a little stiff, but right. I mean, the, that's just, the yeah. cleaner did a good job. It really did. So now that you guys know how I got this grail and how much I paid and all that sort of good stuff, let me talk to you guys a little bit about the history of the Air Jordan 1 bread or the Air Jordan 1 black and red. So the Air Jordan 1 first released back in 1985 for a retail price of $64.99, which is a far cry from what we pay now for Air Jordan 1s, which let's be honest, are much worse quality than these pairs. And what's wild is that when Nike first released the Jordan 1s, they expected to only sell 100,000 pairs in that first year, but they ended up selling 1.5 million pairs. And not just in the first year, in the first six weeks that these shoes released. The Air Jordan 1 was designed by then Nike designer Peter Moore, and they featured an airbag unit in the heel of the shoe. And what's interesting about these shoes besides the fact that they were originally called space boot like Michael really valued court feel in his sneakers so Nike actually removed a lot of the original cushioning from this shoe to allow Michael to really feel the floor but they did keep the air unit in the rubber cup sole and you know what actually now that I have these 1985 Jordan ones I'm really interested to see how they compare to the 85 Jordan ones that have been releasing over the last couple years I think I have a pair up here let me grab it all right so here we go we've got the Air Jordan 1 85 Georgetowns and the 1985 Air Jordan 1 black and reds and I've got to say that they're actually as expected, very similar. As you can see from this 2016 pair of black and red Air Jordan 1s, the silhouette and the shape of the paneling is a little bit different than it is on the 85 Jordan 1s. And the changes to the shape of the silhouette and the shape of the paneling and even the shape of the midsole are changes that took place slowly over time over the last 38 years that the Jordan 1 has been out. And so you don't really notice them until you see them against a pair of 85 Air Jordan 1s or more realistically, a pair of Jordan 1s from 1985. And actually getting back to comparing the 1985 pair to the Air Jordan 1 85s, they are very, very similar. The midsole shape of the shoe is a lot closer than it is on the 2016 pair. The shape of the paneling on the upper, from what I can tell, obviously this pair is pretty heavily worn, 
is very, very similar. The height, even though the size difference is gonna change the height, and the shape of the heel area is very, very similar. And actually, the height of the tongue on both of these shoes is very similar. It's a lot higher than the Jordan 1s that we've become used to over the last couple years. And also, I'm almost certain that the leather used in the 1985 pair is significantly better than the leather used on the 2016 pair. The 2016 pair leather is probably synthetic. If it's not, it's just like the worst grain of leather. Although I like the tumble texture on this shoe, the original one didn't have a tumble texture, so that's a new addition. It's a fake texture. It's something that they rolled on after the fact, and it's something that people have grown used to, so they keep doing it because it makes the leather feel more premium and softer. Also, the Wings logo on this shoe seems to just be printed on, almost flat, versus the 2016 pair where it's debossed or inset into the shoe, or even the 85 pair where it's embossed out of the shoe. I'm not gonna lie, I'm having a really fun time comparing all the differences between all of the other Jordan 1s to this 1985 pair. And actually, if that's something that you guys are interested in, let me know. Maybe I'll make a full comparison video between different Air Jordan 1s throughout the years. Actually, that'd be a really fun idea. I might do that. Regardless, I'm just excited to have my favorite shoe of all time, the original version of my favorite shoe of all time, not just the silhouette, but also the colorway in my possession. Like, I own it now. It's, it's crazy to own a piece of history like this. And I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with the history behind the bread colorway or the band colorway or the black and red colorway. The way that Nike has marketed the Air Jordan 1 black and red over the last couple decades has been as the Air Jordan 1 that was banned from the NBA because of the colors used on the shoe. And to be fair, yes, the NBA did ban these colors and fine Michael Jordan every time he wore black and red out onto the court because it didn't feature enough white in line with his jersey colors. So Nike not only paid that $5,000 fine every time Michael stepped out onto the court, in his black and red shoes, but they also crafted a whole story about how the Air Jordan 1 was the banned sneaker that the NBA banned, but you could wear as a consumer. But it turns out while that story was true, the shoe that was banned from the NBA in the black and red colorway was not the Air Jordan 1. It was actually the shoe that Michael wore before the Air Jordan 1 came out, the Nike Airship. So while yes, this story did happen, it didn't happen on the Jordan 1, and Nike used that as a way to market the Jordan 1 as the banned sneaker. Which I'm not gonna lie, definitely makes the Air Jordan 1 seem a lot more exciting. Like it's definitely a very interesting story behind this shoe. Again though, it wasn't actually about this shoe. To be fair though, the Nike Airship is a very similar looking sneaker, and it's obvious that the Air Jordan 1 drew a lot of inspiration from that shoe. All that said, the Air Jordan 1 black and red, or as it's known now, the Air Jordan 1 bread, is one of, if not the most iconic sneaker of all time. And it's my favorite sneaker of all time. Yo, thank you so much, mate. Yo, yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank dude. you so much. Come Guys, on. seriously check out Bailey's channel. He's got a whole video on how he got these sneakers. Also, he's into retro video gaming. We're gonna film a, uh, a full game. I don't have that many games. We're gonna film a full game collection. It'll be on Bailey's channel. If you guys wanna check that out, there'll be a link to that also in the description below. But this is incredible, man. Oh, oh my god. I'm so happy for you. Dude, thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate it.